I expect, and I'm sure this is going to happen, that the relative strength of the dollar relative to other currencies will remain high. Yeah. But at, but at the same time here, the Fed is not going to stop running its inflation creation machine. The Federal Reserve is issuing debt through one door and then buying it back through another door. This this mechanism has been going on since the meltdown. Okay, it's never stopped. So the relative, although the relative strength of the dollar, I expect to stay high, as you just said, and maybe even gain relative to the value of other currencies. I still see fiat currencies overall here losing purchasing power and real wages based against inflation, you know, uh, to continue to crater. Now, I sincerely do not believe in any way, shape or form. And nobody I know, at least who works in the financial industry at all, believes that the Fed is going to raise rates in any meaningful way. They have no interest at all yeah. in exactly in stopping the in, inflation in, in, in environment that we are in. Uh, as a matter of fact, I've told people for years, their goal is to inflate, inflate, and then inflate some more. They're not done. Their end game is very simple. They want to own it all, Gerald. They are oh, in the middle are. of, yes, sincerely, they want to become the lenders and buyers last resort, and they want to own it all. I'm talking about collectively the central banks. They're taking their product, which is debt, they're, they're creating it out of thin air and they are buying assets around the world. They're creating nation slaves and individual slaves. Slavelandia is getting bigger every single day. And sadly, we're watching people who used to be members of the middle class here trying to claw themselves up by borrowing even more. And all they're doing is assuring they're going to fall to that lower rung. People are addicted to debt, unfortunately, and they think they're going to find a way out of it. And it's the way it's set up is to create slaves. And unfortunately, I think you've nailed it for years. You've talked about slave landing for years, and that's exactly what we have here. It's slave landing on an epic scale. So what do you think about gold, silver, and, um, and, and uh, cryptocurrencies for 2022? Well, I'll tell you, I, I personally love all of these assets for one major reason. They are, in my view, all three of these things that you just mentioned are anti-debt units. Yes, including cryptocurrencies. Why? You own them. They're not owed back to a central bank that issues, let's say, a fiat currency plus interest that they print out of thin air. You own them, okay? So to me, this is how I see this is gonna unfold. I believe the manipulation of metals is gonna continue for as far as the eyeballs can see, and I say good. That gives us all opportunities to, again, bet against the debt and become our own central bank as the global debt continues to hyper expand. The, the debt bubble isn't even close to be blowing up yet. But that's the key. The key what people need to understand is, and they sit here and they focus on the stock market, they're looking in the wrong spot. I look at the stock market secondarily after I see what the debt market is doing, and that's how I've been able to stay ahead of the market for years. The debt market is going to tell us what's going on. We're in a hyper bubble in debt market. It's going to get even bigger, but the bu it's, it's a bubble. The debt market is going to burst at one point, and it's not just me saying it. It's former of, of Fed chairman Alan Greenspan who started saying this several years ago. Other people, the debt bubble is the greatest threat to humankind bar none because it's going to come down to a resource issue at one point. When we get when we get an implosion in the debt market, what's going to happen? Rates are going to spike in an uncontrolled fashion. That's going to put a lot of pressure on the stock market. And cash doesn't go to money heaven, as you well know. It's going to just go from one reality to another. I believe you're going to see cash move like a wave into commodities, gold, silver, crude oil, other commodities. And also, I believe, cryptocurrencies. So for, for people who have a longer term perspective, this is why they need to be in these types of assets. Again, how do I capitalize on the market? I'm an open book. I tell everyone what I do. I am in this market. I own large cap dividend paying stocks to stay long the market. Okay. I've been telling people to do this for a very, very long time. At the same time, I'm telling them to bet against the debt, become their own central bank, own assets like the gold. I love silver. It's my favorite asset of all time. I have it all over my desk, Gerald. <laughs> silver all over my desk. Uh, it's my favorite asset of all time. If you had to pick one, I think that would be it. So, you know, I tell people, to hedge yourself and just be prepared for what's coming down the pipe because none of this is, is, is sustainable in my view. We've heard about this for years, but we're seeing the ramifications of it now globally. We're seeing a global economy contract at its fastest pace in history against GDP. We're seeing homelessness explode. We're seeing elimination of an entire class of people. Uh, so everything that people like you and I have spoken about from years ago, it's happening now. 
So people need to really understand that they need to do something, they need to act now about and, and, and get on the right side of this. Well, my, my, uh, one of my forecasts for 2022 is GSB, gold, silver, Bitcoin. <laughs> Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I actually totally agree on that. Um, you need to be in these things. I've been explaining this for years. You know, I mean, people can go look at my archives. I was telling people to stop buying Bitcoin at 3,000. It's like dividing in at uh, 5 and 10 and 15 and recently it's 41,000. Yep, I, I, I know you, you, the, what you contribute to the magazine, the Trends Journal, is is in, so valuable to readers. So thank you so much. I appreciate and just that. on a closing note, to put this back into perspective on inflation and why the Federal Reserve won't do anything of, real, of reality, these low-life son-of-a-bitches, and you have to be equal these days, and yes. daughters of bastards have been bullshitting us now, going back to around 2000, I think around 2012, when they came up with the line, both the ECB and the, and the Fed in the United States, that when inflation goes above 2%, we're going to raise interest rates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And what do you got? You got a 5% plus over there in Europe. You got a 6.8% over here. And they may raise it a quarter of, or, or, or a half a point yeah. or maybe even three quarters of a point, which is nothing compared to where inflation is going and how the lives of the people are going down mm -hmm. because they're going down big time, like you said. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned about the homeless. Hey, how about smash and grab? Oh, yeah, I left my heart in San Francisco. No, people are leaving San Francisco because the place is going down so bad. You know, so this thing's going to get a lot worse. I agree with you. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. Do you want to know one thing about crypto? I made over 3000% in profit in a few weeks. Fact is, the traditional financial system, the traditional money system makes you poor, not rich. If you want to earn $500,000, million, you have to wait until you're 50, 60, 70 in the traditional financial system and you probably will still be broke and you will be old. This is not a sexy combination as you can imagine. But the question is, how can you start in crypto and make these profits? Where to invest? Where to start? My name is Gunnar and I'm from Germany as you can hear and things are a little bit different in Germany. More about that later on. The fact is, there are lots of different cryptocurrencies. It's a gigantic universe where beginners and professionals get easily lost. But there is light at the end of the tunnel. There are seven key steps you need to follow to become successful in this market. You have to know them and if you fail one of them, it's literally impossible to succeed in this market. Just an example, one of the key points is your exchange and one of the biggest are for example Binance and Coinbase. These are trusted and well established exchanges but, and this is a big but, you won't find the super profitable coins on those exchanges. The unknown super profitable coins that get gigantic profits are not traded on those kind of exchanges. They are traded on much smaller insider platforms that are barely known. And I can tell you what those super secret exchanges are and why they are so profitable. And another super important thing are the right information sources. The point is, the internet is gigantic. There are hundreds and hundreds of YouTube channels, blogs, pages and much, much more. And there are also market makers and influencers. For example, Elon Musk, he is not a crypto guy, but the moment he recommended Dogecoin, it went through the roof, to the moon, so to say. But why did he recommend it? Where did he hear it from? He didn't hear it from newspapers. And believe me, he is listening to someone. But you have to know who and you have to react before he is reacting. This is really, really important. And these are only two of the seven steps you have to follow in order to be successful in crypto. And if you want to know all of these steps in much more detail, and if you want to have a comprehensive checklist, Here's what you should do. There is a link below this video. Click on this link and you will get the opportunity to subscribe to my channel. Click on the link and you will see a video where I explain the next steps. 
So see you soon, click on the link now, I'll see you there.